All right, new bottle this week. I'm not sure why I started um, drinking while I did this show. I guess uh, at first I was just kind of designing jokes around it. Like, like that one. And I guess the show kind of changed over time. And uh, you know, this started out as something just was going to be like real easy, regular content. Uh, and it was kind of going to serve as a way to uh, demonstrate a, to your to the viewers and maybe potential employers down the road that I know my shit about comic books and that I could act in front of the camera and I could do all this other stuff, blah, blah, blah. But the show has kind of transformed a bit and it's become um, just a... I don't know, hanging out and drinking and bullshitting about comic books, and I like that. Um, this is kind of uh, one of my favorite parts of the week, and I uh, really enjoy uh, chilling out and having a drink with y'all and uh, talking about something that's fun and cool and important to me. So I um, guess this week's intro is uh, thanking you uh, for being my drinking buddies. So uh, cheers, y'all. Let's talk about comic books. One of the hardest parts of doing this show is picking which books I'm going to buy every week. And the deciding factor in me getting art ops was this book is drawn by Mike Allred. And if a book is drawn by Mike Allred, you have to buy it. It's the law. Okay, basically the idea behind art ops is there's an organization who's out there sort of preserving the sentient nature of our greatest artworks. They can basically pull the actual person from the painting out of the painting and make them a real person and that somehow protects them. I don't know, I guess turning them into a mortal being, I would think would actually make them more vulnerable because human beings like die and stuff. <laughs> anyway, as far as comic book concepts go, that's, that's pretty fucking cool. You can do some cool stuff with that. You can have an issue where you go clubbing with a guy from the scream or you can even have a cool action scene where the Vitruvian man uh, fights Saturn uh, from that Goya painting, uh, Saturn devouring his children, I think. Let me check that real quick. Excuse me, Saturn Devouring His Son. Uh, Saturn Devouring His Son. It was one of, the work of one of 14 black paintings that Goya painted directly into the walls of his house somewhere between 1819 and 1823. They were transferred to canvas after... What? This guy... 1800 fucked up shit. People drawing pictures of people eating their kids and their walls and then getting their own Wikipedia articles for doing it. Fucked up. Back to the stupid comic book. So we have a cool story concept that kind of fits with the silly nature of comic books and we have an incredibly talented comic book artist. We got ourselves a book, right? There we go, that's better. Unfortunately, the words that are mixed in with the beautiful art and that convey this cool concept, uh, they're just bad. And it's from the word go, too. The first scene in the entire book is the art ops doing this hostile extraction of the Mona Lisa. I mean, the scene is so full of exposition that it's hilarious. The scene basically reads like, Hurry, Mona Lisa, the plot requires us to pull you from this painting so we have someone to explain the concept of this book to. But, but, but why? That is, this doesn't is, make sense. I've seen there, it seemed pretty sick. No time, get in this potato sack. And then once it explains its concept, it fails to turn that concept uh, into a cohesive world. We sort of just jump back and forth and we're constantly redefining what is normal. It Like it appears at first, that the art ops are some sort of covert organization, but then they're having these big time party galas and award shows that would seem to draw attention. And then there's these graffiti monsters that apparently are just hanging around de fools and people are like, oh yeah, you gotta watch out for those things. They're like everywhere and that's normal. But then all of a sudden switch back to this uh, black Power Ranger mixed with Tuxedo Mass here, who is not making this up. He's writing a sitcom on top of this building. And then he floats down and freezes time. So he again can covertly pull the Mona Lisa out of this grocery store and whatever. What's happening here? I, I'm sorry, if I'm all over the place trying to talk about this book, it's because it's just so hard to pin down. It's just all over the place. The narrative has no discipline, no focus. Its world doesn't have clearly defined rules. Its story is constantly breaking the immersion that it's supposed to be building. And yes, Mike Allred is 10 kinds of rock star, and there are so many panels on here that I would happily pay money to hang on my wall. It's a beautiful, colorful, great book, just like all of his work is. But even if it's the best art in the world, it's still only half a good book. And that is not worthy of recommendation. Black Magic, it's not how you spell magic. Black Magic is a book that's based off combining uh, Salem-style witch mythology with gritty noir, crime drama. The protagonist is a female detective who also happens to be a witch. This first issue does a great job of establishing the idea that this book is going to be based around the conflict between the secret hidden witch life 
and her daytime police work. And not only is the concept strong, but the execution is damn near perfect. It shows incredible narrative discipline in the way it slowly builds to a crescendo that you know is coming, but you get so immersed in what's happening, you are still sweating, you're still engaged, you're still driven. There are a couple things about the book that are a little bit off-putting. All the art in this book is shown through this graphite filter. I guess it's supposed to emphasize the dark and gritty nature of this book, but the story already does a good enough job emphasizing that to the readers. Uh, saying it again with the art is just kind of like, hey, hey, we're, we're dark and gritty. Hey, hey. It, it's just too much, and the filter actually kind of flattens out the art. So it's kind of a poor creative choice, and I kind of wish they'd just call a Mullinkin on it and do something different with the next issue. Also, the book opens on a really cool scene where there's like this kind of weird seance thing going on in the woods, and everyone has like their tits out, and knives, and antlers, and shit. And then someone's phone goes off, and it kind of shows like a cool dichotomy between uh, you know, our real world and the witch world, and how they're never going to be completely separated, and how they kind of interfere with each other in both a lighthearted and kind of semi-serious way. And I kind of would like to see more of that in the book, but having said that, what is here is really great. This is a very promising series, and of all the new number ones that came out this week, this is definitely the one most worthy of being added to your pull list. So, boom, idea for a book. Dum Dum Dugan leads a secret shield task force made entirely of goofy, obscure monsters from various corners of Marvel continuity. Basically, it's Dum Dum Dugan and the Monster Avengers. A silly, goofy, fun concept. We'll make it a comedy. Make it lighthearted to give all the monsters lots of personality. Call me Martha Stewart because I got this recipe nailed down. Yes, Halloween Commandos has all the individual ingredients of a great, funny, and endearing book. Unfortunately, the entire time you're reading this book, you're just so hyper aware that things are not coming together like they should. Each individual monster shows almost no personality. They, they just scream and punch things the entire time. The main action set piece of fighting a bunch of zombies is trite and boring to look at. And it presents absolutely no unique or interesting takes on the whole zombie idea. But the biggest place this book fails is that it's trying to be a comedy book and all the jokes are so bad that they're almost non-existent. It tries to squeeze every last laugh it can out of gooby situations like a zombie has a missile launcher. What's he do with it? Oh, well, you blow stuff up. Well, that wasn't really that unexpected. You got a big goofy rock monster. Dum Dum Dugan calls him Rockface. <laughs> They give a gun to a monkey. <laughs> Monkeys aren't supposed to have guns, you silly comic book. Ugh, guys, I'm, I'm bummed. I really, really want to like this book. This is exactly the goofy, fun, kitschy kind of book that I want to root for. I want to like, I really want to enjoy, but uh, it is just so empty and soulless and there's no passion behind its creation. It's just flat and empty through all 22 pages. This is exactly the kind of concept that needs someone like uh, Rick Remender behind it. Someone who's completely wallace in their thinking. Someone who's not going to shy away from every goofy piece of nonsense this book could possibly be jam-packed full. And at the same time, can still capture, you know, nuances of characters. In this current incarnation, this book is completely skippable and not worth your time. Here's hoping uh, that they can get it on the road and can get it in the hands of someone who is going to give it the love and care that it needs. So that's our show. Uh, I'm sorry if this was a little bit shorter episode and uh, we didn't talk about as many books it was kind of a slower week and on the topic of not having much content it's that time of year again guys it's one of the four times a year i actually get to see my girlfriend for those of you who weren't watching the show the the first time uh this happened uh both me and my girlfriend are active duty military i'm stationed out here in chicago she's stationed out in virginia we don't get to see each other uh very often unfortunately but i'm gonna be taking uh, some time and going out and seeing her and if i'm out there doing stuff with her I'm definitely uh, not gonna be drinking and talking about comics with you guys. The, the show's gonna be gone for about uh, two weeks or so uh, while I'm on vacation, but uh, don't worry, uh, the show will return. We will drink more, we will talk more comic books. However, if you guys can just not stand spending two weeks without hearing from me, uh, go ahead and leave a comment on this video and I'll uh, get back to you. While you're doing that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Every new subscriber we get this week will have one of my future children named after him. Like most of the things I say in this segment, that won't be coming true. Anyway, we're out of time, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you come back uh, three Sundays from now and then every Sunday on time after that for a new episode of The Pool. Now get out of here and don't read art ops, like, ever. 
for any reason. While his actions are the same in principle, catch bad guys, keep Gotham safe, etc., there is something very perverse about the way he's balancing the scales. The ironic 